Welcome to Whoops in the Dungeon. Uh, the excitement never ends around here. And um, this only happens once or twice a year, uh, simply because uh, most of you know I'm retired and I'm a fixed income. Uh, but also when you're into single tails and into kangaroo whips, uh, crafters can only plat so many whips a year and uh, there's only so many quality platters in the world. So hence, um, sometimes you have to wait a while for a whip. So we have a new whip tonight. I'm very excited. This is the first whip I've ever ordered from this platter or this company. So first up, we'll talk a little bit um, about uh, the company. It's Witchcraft Whips. They're in Sweden. And the platter, and I, I hope I don't butcher his last name, is Johnny Ogren. And the O has two dots over it. I'm not exactly sure how that changes the pronunciation of the vowel. I'm sure it does. Uh, but in English, it would, I believe it would be pronounced Ogren. I don't know how it's pronounced in Sweden, Swedish. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Johnny. I was recommended to him by another whip enthusiast uh, that's in the lifestyle in the Baltimore area. Uh, and also, uh, when I was conversing with Desert Minx at Mojave Outliers, uh, Mojave Outliers is another single tail maker. Uh, Desert Minx actually recommended Johnny to me. Uh, it's rare in my years of dealing with platters. Uh, Desert Minx is the first platter that I've ever dealt with that also recommended another platter to me. Uh, with one exception, I approached uh, Peter Thor Thorndike to do a bullwhip before he was actually making bullwhips. He was just doing stock whips at the time. And Peter recommended me uh, that I go to Casey Tyler. So I guess that's not True, another whip maker did recommend someone else, but this is the first time a whip maker that's made me a bull whip has recommended me to go to someone else to try out their bull whip. So uh, I thought that was interesting. I will say Johnny is lifestyle friendly. He has a witchcraft whips profile on Fat Life. And I actually did all my correspondence with him regarding this purchase through FetLife. Uh, at the time I wrote him, I described what I was looking for. He came back with several emails back and forth and recommended that I go with a natural belly build, a two belly build, four foot bull whip with a nine inch handle, which is what I prefer, no, no wrist loop, uh, 16 plat. And he quoted me 4,300 Corona or SEC, which is the Swedish currency. And so I had to go to Google Tran uh, Converter and, and do the conversion. Uh, 4,300 SEC or Corona, Swedish Corona is $419.07. But I will say Johnny did not ask for postage separately. And I will also say that when I got this parcel from Sweden, there's no indication on the parcel at all how much the shipping or the postage cost. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how much the whip cost as opposed to shipping. And I'll tell you what I'm, the way I'm gonna guesstimate it. Uh, for me to ship something to Sweden, uh, first class international would be about $46. So $46 is 472 Corona. So I, I'm gonna, just for estimate sake, I'm gonna take 472 Corona from the, uh, the 4,300 Corona and you end up with 3828 sec. 3828 sec currently translates to $373 and a few pennies, okay? Well, 373 for a four foot bull whip, I haven't, actually done the division yet, but if you divide that by four, that's less than $100 a platted foot. Uh, for a two belly bull whip, I would say Johnny's pricing is very, very reasonable. I know one other quality platter 
that would be a little bit less expensive, but he's not overpriced. He was very good in communicating back and forth. His wait list was about six months. He agreed to put me on his wait list without a deposit. Uh, when he was ready to do the build, he wrote me. I sent him a 50% deposit or half of the, uh, the SEC and it took him about 10 days and he wrote me back, said it was finished, sent me a, a, a photo of it in the message and I sent him the remainder and it went in the mail. Uh, I will say customs and mail from Sweden wasn't quite as quick as what I used to from Australia or New Zealand, but it, it arrived in a reasonable amount of time. I'd have to go back to my email and look and see, but I would say it was like two weeks so without further ado, let's unbox it and see what we have inside. It kind of looks like what I would expect uh, maybe a pizza box to look like in the States. I don't know if this is a pizza box in Sweden, but it's about that size, about the size of a, a, a deep dish or square medium pizza box. And if I can get all the tape undone, we might actually get the lid to open. It's not, still not through all the tape. Okay, there we go. All right, drum roll out there. So we've got what we have inside. Always go over what it was shipped with. We have two of those air bubble things. Uh, it's wrapped in some foam. And uh, kind of a, no, no, not bubble wrap, but foam, light foam. Okay. And we have a whip. And we have a card, a brochure. All right, so let's see. And there's no invoice or any kind of shipping document other than the, the uh, customs form that was on the front. So inside, what do we have? We have, looks like uh, a sticker that I could put on uh, my whip bag or on the car, car window if I wanted to. We have a business card, actually a couple of business cards from Johnny Ogren, the maker, with his website. I'll put his website in the description below the video uh, because he has a website separate from his FetLife profile. He has email, he's on Instagram and Facebook. So he's, you know, it's easy enough to get a hold of Johnny through a variety of means. And then this little brochure, quality kangaroo leather whips, witchcraft whips. Uh, and he's got a recommendation from Todd Rex. Um, which I must admit, I'm not familiar with Todd Rex, but evidently he's a professional whip trainer for film and TV and award-winning competition. Okay, and a pic picture inside of Australian bullwhip, a classic bullwhip, an indie bullwhip, stock whip, snake whip, and signal whip. So um, it looks like at a minimum, Johnny makes six different builds or types of whips and he's got swatches of the colors that of rue that he can readily get black saddle tan brandy natural whiskey and red and i believe i asked for brandy and saddle tan so that's what i got brandy and saddle tan most of my whips are either brandy and saddle tan or their whiskey and saddle tan. Um, I only have one or two whips that are single color. I enjoy paying a little bit extra to have the two colors. So now that we've gone through the preliminaries, let's look at this whip. Well, one thing I'll say is he's using a white cracker, which for dungeon play, uh, I absolutely approve of. Uh, you can't see a colored cracker in a dim lit dungeon, nor can you see a black cracker in a dim lit dungeon, 
the material feels like uh, poly baling twine or what I would call polyester baling twine, which would be fine for sport cracking. Uh, extremely intense for dungeon play. I use uh, a different style cracker that's in a different video. So the fall is nicely cut, thin, looks like latigo. Not very long though, I'll have to measure that. That, um, well, if the handle's nine inches long, and we use the handle to measure the fall with, that fall is nine and nine. That falls 18 inches long. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, most of the, the whip makers in Australia and New Zealand now are making falls a little bit longer than that. But I will say 20 years ago when Mike Murphy was making whips, the whips of Mike's that I had uh, were built on what I call a one-third, two-thirds ratio, which means the fall was a third of the total length of the whip, which you can see that's the same ratio roughly that Johnny's using. His fall is a third of the total length of the four foot bull whip. So let's take a look at this whip. The handle plaiting is extremely nice. Uh, he's just got a hearing bone about halfway down, then he does kind of a little checker thing, almost like Murphy would have done in the middle. But then the, the bottom half isn't like what Murphy would have done at all, as neither is the top. Uh, the pineapple knight's not very nice. There's no mark, marking in at the end of the pommel. The pommel is a nice feel in the palm of my hand, nice grip. This whip is extremely, has been rolled extremely smooth. I don't know how long Johnny spent on it, rolling it. I, I will say there's a transition there. Not bad. And right there. The one right there. And maybe one there. Okay, so we have one, two, three. Definitely there. He dropped three strands. At least that's the way I feel it. One, two, three. But only one of them is real distinct. Uh, the plaiting is very nice. The skiving on the top half is very nice. And he, he tapers his stranding. A lot of platters don't taper their stranding. He tapers his stranding. That's why there's so few drops in this. Uh, his fall hitch is very tight, uh, very streamlined. I'm, I'm not looking forward to changing a fallout with a fall hitch that's that tight, but at my age, I probably won't be changing that fallout in my lifetime. Okay, obviously it just came out of the box. It needs some conditioning. Very, very smooth whip. Let's see how it rolls out. So um, that's my first check. I close my eyes, run my hand down the continuous taper, and I try to feel for drops, bumps, rocky roads. There are no bumps or rocky roads, but I can feel three drops or transitions. I roll it out with the belly. It rolls out straight. Now, obviously, this whip isn't broken in, but it should roll true right out of the box. And against the spine, it's not gonna roll out, but it, it should arc. So I wanna make sure, and it's partly the, the style I throw. I throw a true backhand. So I'm throwing a lot against the spine on the backhand side, and it should arc straight. And that's the tough part for a lot of platters. They'll, they'll all roll true with the belly, but against the spine, a lot of platters will go out and it will take a jog one way or the other. So the, 
the, the second half of the pole as they're plaiting it sometimes isn't straight and even. That's dead on straight. Okay, now this is the toughest test. Uh, and we'll just have to see how it goes. I take about 18 inches of the arc and I roll it 360 degrees around itself and I look for any kinks in the plaiting that might come out and see if it maintains its arc as it's rolling around on itself. This is really tight work. That looks really good. The top half does. Hope everybody can see that because I stood up and it, it, with a four foot whip, it's always like this. It's the second half when it starts to really taper that that's a really tough test for. So there's a little, little bump right there, halfway around. But to be absolutely honest, this, this really um, passes that test nicely. Okay, so there's nothing more to say other than I need to throw, 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 and break this whip in. And when it's about three quarters of the way broken in, I'll come back for a follow-up video and we'll target a sheepskin or a balloon or something. Uh, and we'll let you know uh, how this whip is broken in and how it's behaving. But right out of the box, it's really nice work. Uh, it's a reasonable price. And I would say I wouldn't have any trouble recommending Johnny to anybody, but I do. I like a whip that has a lot of flow. This may end up with a little too much Viagra in here, but you really don't know till it's broken in. It's, it's rolling out really straight right now, but it needs to be broken in. It's very stiff to there, and the second half of it has good rollout. So I've got to get the upper part of this thong broken in, and we'll see how it, how it tracks, but it's very accurate. Um, easily, you could put a candle out with this whip. Okay, we're gonna do a little editing of the video because I wanted you to ha have a chance to see a close-up of this fine plaiting work that Johnny's done. Okay, so here's the pommel. He's got a clean pommel. There's no whip maker's mark at the end of the pommel. Some people do, some don't. Mike Murphy didn't do that, so that's not uncommon, but very, very nice handle plaiting. I call this section like just a simple herringbone or whipmaker's plat. And then he's doing some, some chevron work there, some what I would call bird's eye. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's his own signature, but it's very nice work, very nice pineapple knot. And then if you look at the whipmaker's plat, which is actually my preference for the thong, uh, this plaiting needs to be straight as an arrow, and it is. If we put a straight edge on that plaiting all the way down, that is going to be straight as an arrow. Now, if you look up here, the 16 plat is a little bit thicker, but if you pay attention, Johnny has tapered his stranding as he's gone down the four-foot whip. So you're going to see not only is it a concentric, con uh, concentric taper or continuous taper, but as we come down the whip, that stranding's getting narrower and narrower, a little slimmer and slimmer. That's a very difficult technique to do when you're, when you're cutting stranding, but what it results in is it results in you having to drop fewer, str fewer strands as you're making a whip that's this short. Making a shorter bull whip is more difficult than making a longer bull whip, in my opinion, because, uh, because of that. You have to achieve that continuous taper much quicker. Then you can see the fall hitch is very nicely done. His fall is very trim, very streamlined. And it's about an 18 inch fall, which as I said earlier, 
is what I would consider uh, uh, similar to the way Mike Murphy would have cut and balanced uh, a fall for one of his whips. Okay, so very nice example of a 16 plat two belly whip coming out of Sweden, and I'm excited about breaking it in. As always, thank you for watching our video.